Hey, what is going on everyone? Paul James here. Thanks Rebel for the subscription. I uh, appreciate that. That was quick. Um, let's, let's see here what we've got. Uh, lots of firsts in the chat box. Awesome. What's up Joel? What's up Rikus? What's up Freeway? What's up Oru Gaming? Welcome guys. Thank you for joining me for live stream. Told you guys I'd be doing some more live streams today. Thanks, Freeway. I appreciate that. Uh, yo, Nilish, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So we're going to be talking about five simple logo design tips today. I want to share with you guys kind of what I'm working on and something cool that I'm doing. Joel says I have great content. Thanks, Joel. I appreciate that. Hey, what's going on, Hype Blaster? Uh, good day, Carrie. Welcome. We're going to be doing some... Q&A at the end as well. We'll do some, we'll do a brief q and I don't have a lot of time, but we'll do a brief Q&A. We're just going to kind of let some more people fill in before we actually go into the five tips that I want to give you. And I think you're going to get a lot out of this. If any of you out there are like thinking about building a company or a brand or a product and you're needing a logo, and these are five tips that are going to help you guys out. Cool, cool. Hey from France. Welcome. John, thank you for the subscription. Appreciate it. All right, cool. Um, all right, guys. So today, like I said, we're going to be talking about five shockingly simple logo design tips that you can implement. We're going to go ahead. We're going to try and cue that intro. If you ain't beefing about the money, then what's the problem? I hope that worked. It worked last time. So if you're building a business, if you're building a company, you're going to need a logo. You're going to need something that looks good, that resonates with people, that is an accurate description of your brand. That's what this live stream is all about. So if you're here live with me, that's awesome. Do me a favor and smash the like button if you're excited about you know, getting logos designed or you're excited about building your company. Also, if you're new here and you've never been here before, uh, my name is Paul James. I'm an entrepreneur. I do step-by-step -step tutorials. I talk about entrepreneurship. And I talk about stuff like this that is important um, aspects of running a company and building a business. Um, so if you're new here, drop down and subscribe. Um, if you do it on the stream, I'll probably shout you out. Um, and then also, uh, if you're not on the stream and you're doing, uh, you're subscribing afterwards, you can comment on the video and say I've subscribed. And then I'll go back through, I'll read the comments, I'll welcome you to the channel. So let's get into it. Tip number one for getting a good logo design is you need to give a clear direction of exactly what it is that you want in a logo. So the more accurate you can be, the better if you have colors in mind. Like if you know you want your logo, like my logo is like black and green, right? Uh, so I clearly had a direction of like the color scheme I wanted, um, the style I wanted. I knew that I wanted kind of a, a, like a, a fun style that was kind of energetic and kind of gave off that vibe, kind of like almost like a DJ vibe. That's just kind of the style I wanted to go for. That was the direction that I gave my designer. And I think he did a good job with it. Um, icon or no icon, that's something you're going to want to think about if you can give clear direction on that. So some logos have icons in them. Others don't. Others are just kind of word art. Um, so think about that. Um, also, you'll see logos that have initials in them. So your company might be called something. Um, but the icon could be the initials of whatever your company is called. So think about all those different aspects and the more clear direction that you can give your designer, the better you're going to have as an outcome, the better your logo is going to look at the end of the day. So uh, that's, that's going to be a really solid tip to help you get a good logo. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to give examples of other logos that you like. So when you find a designer, they're going to have a lot of options of a lot of different styles that they could design. And they're not mind readers, right? If you get a bad logo back from them and you've got a good designer, but you get a bad logo back, it's not necessarily a bad logo. It might just be not the logo that you wanted, right? It might have just been different than you envisioned. Well, they're not mind readers. So you're going to have to try and give them examples. So if you can go out there, you could do like a Google search for logo designs or cool logo designs. You can get a lot of feedback and see a lot of different examples. Pick out the ones that resonate with you. Pick out the ones that you want to most closely uh, align with your brand and have your designer try and make you something 
and use those ideas for inspiration. Now, I'm not saying that that means he's gonna copy those logos or that he's gonna design you the exact same thing, but this can actually help you to uh, get a clear picture and some people are more visual, like if they could see, okay, he likes this style, then he can kind of, or he or she, whoever the designer is, can help you better get that logo designed doing it that way. So that's tip number two I have for you. Tip number three, give a solid explanation of what the logo is for. Hey, thanks, Kimoy Nelson, for the subscription. Appreciate that. Um, so a solid explanation. What does your company do or what is the product? If you can share that with the designer, that's going to help convey more about yourself or your company. So that's going to be helpful. Um, talk about what uh, problems that your company solves or that your product sells or whatever it is you're getting the logo design for. That's going to give your designer insight into maybe what they should make the logo around. And then explain what the logo should convey. Like, let's say, for example, I was designing a logo for a YouTube training course, for example. Um, what would I want that to convey? Would I want my designer to make sure that he could convey that people know that they're going to learn how to grow a YouTube channel? Maybe he would do a logo that has like a play button in it or something like that. So that's what I mean by that is explain what the logo should convey. If it should convey anything, but most of the time, you know, you want the logo, not in a hundred percent of the cases, but in a lot of the cases, it can be helpful if the logo can convey what it is that your product does or the problems that your company or your product solves. So that's tip number three. Um, tip number four, give the designer a list of emotions that you want people to feel when they look at your logo. So when I talked about my logo, the Paul James logo, it's, it's the one you're looking at on the, on the live stream right now on the top corner. That was part of it. Someone says, I feel like I'm watching a real video. That's, that's hopefully the goal. Um, but we'll do some Q and A at the end. So, I've got a lot of practice at this, don't I? <laughs> um, but my, my other logo, I wish I had my t-shirt on right now. You guys have probably seen my Paul James shirt, right? It's the green logo. It's the one that uh, goes on the front of the shirt, right? And uh, on the front of the video as well. Um, I wanted people to feel kind of like energized when they looked at it. I wanted it to give kind of like that vibe of kind of like I said, like a DJ. Like I wanted it to really feel like energetic and like get people excited. So that's kind of the emotions I wanted to provoke with that logo and I express that to the designer. So if you can come up with different logos like, um, or different emotions that you want your logo to basically convey, like if you want people to feel happy when they look at it, if you want them to feel like motivated or if you want them to feel like angry or whatever it is, you know, whatever your product or company is, try to convey those emotions to your designer. All right, and then number five, and I think this is really helpful if you're someone who is not really sure what you want. Like you're kind of thinking like, I don't really know, like I'm not really a designer, so I don't really know what I want, is to run a contest. There's lots of um, benefits to running a contest. And what it does is it basically allows you to get your um, idea or the concept that you need a logo for in front of hundreds, maybe even thousands, but at least hundreds of designers that can look and, and maybe they want to take a shot at giving you the perfect logo that you want. So if you can do that, that is really cool. Um, it gives you a lot of options because then you can go through and you can like see what you like or what you don't like. And if you're not sure what you want initially, this is going to help give you some clarity. So it's great if you're not sure exactly what you want. It also creates some friendly competition with the designers because they're going to be kind of competing back and forth. Thanks for the subscription, Carmen. Appreciate that. Um, but yeah, they're going to be competing back and forth to try and basically win the contest. Basically the way logo design contest works is whoever designs the logo that you pick gets awarded the prize money and you can you know set up the prize uh, depending on how many logos you want to come in or the, the caliber of the designs, you can get them all coming in. Um, but you end up at the end of that, hey Ron, thanks for the subscription. You end up at the end of that with a logo that you're guaranteed to love, which is great. and. That's what I like to do for a lot of the companies or the products that I'm really serious about. I like to run a contest. BC Cars, thank you for the subscription. So someone says, where do you run a, a logo contest? So I'm gonna share with you a logo contest I'm running right now. And this is actually like 
I, I guess I was only gonna do five tips, but this will be like tip number six, kind of an unannounced tip, is to get feedback from people. So in the link of the description, guys, you should see a link. It's gonna go to a poll of a logo design contest I'm holding. I'm gonna put it on the screen as well so you can see it. This is a logo design contest that I'm running right now on a site called Design Crowd. And um, this is awesome because I'm building a new product, um, a new company that I'm building. And you guys can kind of like see the start of it now. And what you guys can actually do is I put this poll together. I received 161 logo designs for this. Um, the website is in the description. I see someone saying, what's the website? I'll put it in the chat box too, for those of you who are here live. But it's also in the description. And check this out. I received 161 logo designs for this contest for my new company that I'm building. And then I picked 55 designs. I narrowed it down to a bit, basically a third of ones that I thought looked cool. So now I can have you guys come in and you guys can come and look through these and see which one you guys like best. And you can like pick a star rating. If you want to give feedback on the design, like if you thought something was cool or you liked it for a particular reason, you could kind of go and explain why. So that would be kind of tip number six, I guess. That was kind of an unannounced tip is to share what you're getting, like your, your designs and share it with people who you value their feedback. And I value your guys' feedback. Um, so I'm sharing it with you guys right now, right? And now you guys can come through and you can share your feedback with me. And that's gonna obviously help me select the very best logo and branding for this new company that I'm building, um, which is called Cold Traffic Webinars. So look at the sheer amount of designs that came in from this contest that I held. And at the end of it, I'm gonna end up with like a logo that I'm guaranteed to love. Like how could you go wrong? There's just so many good logos in here. Like there's so many of them that pop out at me. Like it's almost hard to decide. Um, and I guess that's kind of where tip number six comes into play. Um, so yeah, those are my five tips, guys. And if you came here on the replay, and that's kind of what you were looking for, um, again, link is in the description. If you want to go check out my poll and uh, help me pick out a logo, uh, if you're thinking about running a contest, this is kind of how I'm doing it using Design Crowd, and I just got a ton of submissions. It's really cool. But for those of you who are here live with me right now, uh, I'd love to do some Q&A with you guys and uh, whether it's, you know, related to logo design or starting a business, anything, guys, we can, I'll, I've got time briefly to do some questions. Cam says, yeah, those logos are cool. Thanks, Cam. I thought so too. I thought they did a really good job. Like there's just so many of them that I could see like really working like, like this, this is pretty creative too. Like they did like the cold vibe with the snowflake and then traffic, like the traffic lights. So some people like literally captured like you know, the, the name, uh, two wheels rule. Thank you for subscribing. Appreciate it. Um, you can see some of the icon stuff I was talking about where they use the initials, uh, like this one kind of did like a bar chart inside of like the thing, but it's represents the W of webinars and it's got the C and the T. So that was pretty cool. This one kind of looks like a computer screen with like a chart going through it. Kind of like if you're watching a webinar and, uh, you're bringing in traffic and you know, Stats are increasing. This one kind of did an initial thing right here with the, the C and the T of cold traffic. So, I mean, just a lot of really cool things. So yeah, um, pretty neat, pretty neat stuff. And I'm, I'm really happy with all of the submissions I got and I can't wait to pick a winner on this design contest and start building this new company. And that's, I think that's one of the most fun things about starting a company is like, once you have your idea, and you're committed to something. Thanks, RB Art, for the subscription. Appreciate it. Um, picking out like the design and the branding and stuff is really exciting. It's a really exciting aspect of it for me. How do I accept payments from clients? Okay, so uh, you have a few options. Obviously, you could accept cash from them or have them mail you a check if you're not in person. Those are two really easy options. Uh, otherwise, the third option is PayPal, which is super easy and pretty much everyone has. Um, if you're looking for invoicing options, I would highly recommend FreshBooks, freshbooks.com. They're good for invoicing. Um, if you're trying to accept credit cards, uh, Stripe, stripe.com or authorize.net are pretty much my go-tos. Uh, can I do a video on pay per call? I actually have that in my video idea list and it's something that I'll probably be working on really soon. 
Um, let's see. Some, Michael says, done submitting my feedback. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. Um, like I said, guys, you can literally help me pick out the new branding and logo for my new company by uh, visiting that link in the description. And uh, you can check out the logo contest I ran on Design Crowd and see just how many logo designs I got in, and you can help me pick it out. Uh, Megan says, this may seem like a silly question, but is making money online taxable income? So I'm not an accountant or a lawyer, so it's not business advice, but I would say it's probably taxable income. Um, so you definitely, you know, get started, and then when it, tax time rolls around, try and talk to a CPA and have them figure it out for you. Um, let's see, what else do we have? What do I think of drop shipping in Shopify? Um, good business model. Uh, I think that there's some pros and cons to it. Uh, but overall, I mean, put your twist on it. I'd recommend anything that you do with like e-com. If you can try to build a brand around it versus just trying to find one winning product, I think you're going to be a lot more successful in the long run. Um, there are cons to drop shipping though, right? You've got delayed shipping time usually because stuff is coming from China. And it's a, a thing where people are very competitive. They reverse engineer your designs and they take them and they take your advertising campaigns. So um, yeah, I, I'm not doing a lot of Shopify and drop shipping right now. I've done some in the past. You can see the case studies on it, but I've never been like super big into it. So I'm not, I'm not really a Shopify guy right now, but Maybe in the future I'll do something with it. We'll see. If I do, I'll definitely document it. Um, someone says they do retail arbitrage. Awesome. Yeah, we do a lot of retail arbitrage. We just went to FedEx today, actually, to drop off a box on our way to the rock climbing gym. And uh, FedEx is on the way, so we dropped it off there. Uh, we're doing a lot of that nowadays. Um, we're literally buying stuff from eBay that we can resell on Amazon, and we're reselling it. So not even having to go in the stores as of right now. So it's pretty cool. Uh, where can I be a logo designer? Um, I mean, you can you can go on sites like Design Crowd probably and become a logo designer there and participate in these contests. Um, someone says, oh, he's asking Michael if he's making money with it. Michael says he learned everything from me. Thanks, Michael. Hope you're doing well with it. It's uh, definitely a really fun business model. Do you have any idea how to do retail arbitrage even outside the US? Um, I mean, check Amazon's website, but I know Amazon has um, many different countries that they service, and as long as you can sell on Amazon in your country, then you should be able to do it. I don't see why not. Michael says he is making money with retail arbitrage. That's awesome, Michael, good work. Yeah, it, it's a it's a hard business to uh, not make money in because you're you're gonna, find stuff that sells. That's what's so great about retail arbitrage because you're selling already hot selling items. I mean, it's just a matter of whether you can find the item cheap enough to make a good profit on it. All right. Any other questions, guys, before we wrap up? We're coming to the 20 minute mark. It sure goes fast with live streams. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up the video. And thank you guys for uh, checking out my poll here and helping me pick up my logo. I appreciate that. That's going to help me out a ton. And hopefully it gives you guys some good ideas for, um, you know, running a logo design contest of your own for when you start a company. Um, you do eBay drop shipping, you used to do products from China, but now you've stopped and you've started drop shipping from Walmart. Yeah, it's going to be a lot faster doing it that way for sure. Because when you're drop shipping off of, you know, like AliExpress or something like that, um, you have to wait the two weeks for the shipping if you're buying it from China. Someone says, I'm kind of nervous about asking clients for $500 to $1,000 for helping with a website. I guess I want to know if it's worth that. It's absolutely worth that. I mean, that's a skill that you're learning and your skill and your time is valuable. So don't undersell yourself. Don't sell yourself short. Your time is valuable and you taking the time to learn that skill is valuable and it's absolutely worth $500 to $1,000. Uh, check this out, guys. There's companies out there that charge um, quarter million dollars for logos even, you know, when when you can go on a site like Design Crowd and get tons and tons of them for just, you know, a couple hundred bucks. 
there's sites out there that charge companies out there that charge a quarter million dollars. They like um, a site just redesigned American Express's logo, and I think they charge them a quarter million dollars for that. So don't undersell yourself or undervalue your services. You absolutely can charge whatever you want and whatever um, you know time you put into it, and it took you time to learn that skill, and you know you've got bills to pay too. So it's absolutely worth it. You got a lot of inventory, but it's selling slowly. Yeah, maybe try to uh, look at Keepa, Michael, is what we've been using a lot. And we look on, on Keepa at the best sellers rank of the item, and we look for the dips. And you could basically count how many times it dips is how many times it's selling. So if you can count for the month that it has like five dips, then you'll know that product sells about five times a month. And that can help you make better buying decisions. Do I manage websites for others? Yeah, I have um, I have quite a few clients that I manage websites for. Um, when I decided to commit to doing YouTube um, at the beginning of, well, it was probably more like around like May or June, um, April-ish of last year, I decided I was gonna take time away from my other businesses, but I do still have my clients that I still service. But actively, I'm trying to really focus on YouTube right now. Um, but I did... Uh, I did build um, a huge business, consulting business, when I first got going, and uh, that's kind of like what inspired me to start the YouTube channel, to share that with other people. How do I land clients? Um, there's lots of ways to land clients. You find a, a problem that they need solved, and then you present them with a way to solve it for them. You know, sh point out the problem to them, and then point out your solution to them. And the biggest tip I can give you is to always follow up. Most people, they go and they reach out to someone, and if they don't hear back, then that's it. But you're losing out on so much opportunity that way. You need to be following up with people. It takes at least five follow-up attempts to get someone's attention. I see someone said about creating a referral system. That's a good idea. We do a lot of referrals um, with my consulting business. So um, I would say probably when I first started, I got um, I got I was working with a heating company and then I got a dentist client and then I was doing music at the time and my producer needed a website. I ended up designing him a website and then he liked the website so much that he was working with a record label and the record label that he was working with liked his design and then they hired me. And then their, his, the producer's brother also hired me to become a wedding DJ. He was a wedding DJ. And I built him a website, and then he hired me to do search engine optimization for him. Um, and then he hired me to do it in multiple locations. And things just kept snowballing like that. So referrals are big in the industry. And if you can just do a good job for people, they're going to be happy to share the results that they got working with you. And it just starts to snowball. You land one or two clients and they start talking about you to their friends, or someone sees the website with your name at the bottom. That's one thing too that I always do. I put my name at the bottom of the websites I design, and then they can go and look at my website and then hire me if they want. So I got, I got a lot of business that way too. Uh, what software do I use to design logos and websites? Um, so this isn't a software that you see on the screen. This is a design crowd. It's a website that you can hold logo design contests and people can basically, you, you can say, okay, I'm willing to pay this amount for the logo and whoever designs the best logo is going to get this amount. That's basically how it works. And a bunch of designers, like you can see, I got 161 logo designs so far. Um, will submit and whoever I pick for the winner is going to get that prize money. So that's what I use for logos. I do a lot of contests like this because it, for me, I'm like indecisive a lot. I don't really know what I want. I have kind of an idea, but this kind of really eliminates that for me and I can really, you know, get the, the pick that I want. Um, and for website design, I use WordPress. Um, I host it on like Bluehost, a WordPress site. And then I will just design it using like a WordPress theme. And like I said, that comes down to learning a skill. I have a tutorial on that as well. Um, you could probably scroll through my YouTube channel to find it um, about designing a website.
All right, cool guys. Um, well, we're gonna go ahead and wrap the live stream up there. Thank you guys for being here. I'll try and do another one soon, maybe in like a week. Um, and you know, this is a good chance to come in and ask questions and for me to answer them. But yeah, guys, I appreciate you being on here. And if you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this stream. Um, but I appreciate you guys and thank you for being a subscriber. We'll see you next time. I'm Paul James. Peace out.